It's summertime. Quickly, before we start off, for those who don't know me, my name is Sean Witt and I am what some would say a pike fishing maniac. And for more than 18 years, I've been hooked into this game called pike fishing. In the previous episode, we dove into spring fishing, for many anglers the favorite time of the year. The chase for big pike is what drives us to face horrible weather and travel thousands of kilometers. After all these years, you can still discover new techniques, locations, and most of all, meet new friends that share the same fire and passion for our favorite species, Northern Pike. In this four part series, we will cover each season and how to fish successfully for pike year round, as the style of fishing is very different throughout the year. Over the years, I like to believe that I found a good balance between getting the results and, at the same time, having fun. In these videos, I will dive into spots, migration behavior, lures to choose for different situations and which important details will help you locate pike faster and eventually catch more and bigger fish. Let's dive in. From spring we race into summer, starting in June and ending somewhere in September, depending on where you are located. During spring the whole pike fishing dynamic is based around the weather and its effect on the water conditions and thus how the pike and bait fish migrate in and out of the spawning grounds. As the season progresses, pike behavior becomes more predictable but far from easier. In fact, one could argue that summer is the most difficult time of the year to catch pike. And for many anglers, August is their least favorite month to catch those fish. There are a few reasons why the result during summer can be disappointing. The main reason is warm weather, which forces a lot of fish to go to the deeper water where the temperature is much lower. This makes them harder to find and harder to catch when casting with spinning gear. Another factor during summer is that pike like their intermittent fasting. Short feeding windows throughout the day while being passive for longer periods. Finally, another factor is the limit in the amount of fishing spots, as grass and vegetation in some countries becomes a real frustration. As mentioned many many times before, but yet not often enough, always keep an eye out on the water temperature. Fish responsibly. We all cherish our pike population and catch and release is generally the accepted policy. Pike do not thrive really well in warm conditions with low oxygen in the water. There isn't a specific threshold or anything as this varies per country or water. But if you want to fish responsible for pike during summer, here are a couple of guidelines that most of the pike fishing community uses. Don't fish for pike during heat waves. If it's 30 degrees celsius outside or even higher, focus on different species or stop fishing entirely. Keep the fight short with heavy equipment as pike tend to fight harder with warm temperatures. Cut trebles when you cannot unhook them fast and easy. Monitor the water temperature with your sonar. Usually 21-22 degrees is the high risk barrier. Above that you will highly increase the risk of mortality. Also, keep the pike in the water for as long as possible. And now as well, we're getting the measuring tape and let the water flow through its gills. And I put the fish back in the water. But most of all guys, use common sense. Now with that out of the way, let's focus on how to catch pike during summer when the conditions allow it. Let's rewind back a bit towards the end of spring and see how the pike behavior changes. Chances are quite high that pike and bait fish already spawned. And with bait fish I mean brim, carp, tench, roach, all kinds of fish that pike feed on. All these fish that were once concentrated on a certain spot or in a certain area will now scatter across the lake and are more widespread. The smaller fish usually stay in and around the spawning grounds, while the bigger fish will start to roam around more freely. For the sake of simplicity, we can narrow down our tactics during summer while fishing on the lake into three specific ones. We can either fish the grassy shallow areas, fish on the edge of the grass towards the deeper water or target pike that are roaming above the deeper water. Let's start shallow and fish less than two and a half meters deep. Areas that are usually covered with grass and other vegetation during summer. This type of fishing has its limitations when it comes to lure choices, as grass and vegetation grow rapidly towards the surface, especially during a warm summer. You either need to fish through it or above it as shallow as possible. Topwater fishing is a fantastic option that can be effective at dodging that gnarly thick grass. The suicide duck 
or the 3D Warp Frog provokes some of the most spectacular strikes from pike possible. Keep in mind that this isn't always the most effective way of fishing. Pike will often hit the lure, but not inhale it, and thus setting the hook can be frustrating. Tightening your drag will result in a better hook ratio, but most of all, you need to keep your cool. Don't try to set the hook when you see the fish, wait until you feel the fish. I know guys, this is really difficult, but trust me, this is the most important thing you can learn when fishing with topwaters. The shallow burbot or jerkbaits like the jerkster can work great, but the grass needs to be below the surface at least 30 centimeters. You can let your lures run a bit more shallow by lifting your rod tip up high and generally you can fish faster during summer as fast retrieves will also help you fish above the grass. A faster retrieve will make your lure run much more shallow. Other great options are the goby shads with a shallow screw or the pulse tail roach. If you want to fish through the grass, spinnerbaits are a great option to fish through the grass if it isn't too thick. You could always make short casts in the small pockets where grass isn't as abundant as on other spots. For these situations, a spinnerbait like the Dabouche is a great tool to fish through the grass. The 14cm version will provoke strikes from other fish like Xander and Perch, while the 22cm is a great spinnerbait for pike. If you really want to fish through the grass but it's too thick for spinnerbaits, you could also go for a soft bait with an offset hook, the cannibal shed or the river roach, but make sure your line is as smooth as possible. So tie your fluorocarbon directly to your main line and remove any unnecessary stuff like snaps or swivels because the grass can get stuck on it. Another tactic is to focus on the edge towards the deeper water. Position your boat close to the edge of the drop off on the deeper side. The baits that we mentioned before are still a good option, but if you notice that the fish are coming from the deeper side, you might want to switch to something with a higher sink ratio. And thus, topwaters are usually not that effective anymore. One effective way of fishing is to cast just over the edge towards the shallow part, in the grassy area. Reel in fast with your rod tip up high so you don't get stuck into the grass, and then pause your bait once you have crossed over from the shallow area to the deep part. Let your bait hang there for one or two seconds, this is usually the window when a pike hit your bait. Reel up the slack to keep tension on the line and make sure to hold tight on that rod because those takes close to the boat are super super hard. Besides the dabouche or the jerkster, the 25cm roach or the 25cm trout work really well as they have the capacity to swim a bit deeper when needed. Slow down your retrieve when you get closer to the boat and be keen on spotting that fish that follow your lure. As big fish, tend to come from the deep area a few meters behind your bait. You definitely don't want to pull your lure too fast out of the water. I've been there and I can tell you, it hurts to see a big fish being spooked like that and you could have caught that fish if you just waited a second or two longer. You can also fish the drop off by trolling with a variety of lures. Follow the contour of the drop off while keeping your lures on the deeper side. Swim baits that run high or a few meters deep are super effective. If you want to fish the shallow side of the drop off too, you could go for a paravan with a lure with a low sink rate, like the shallow burbot or the pulse tail roach. In autumn, when trolling, you can cover the shallows with a wider variety of lures once the grass starts to decline. Which brings us to the third tactic, which is fishing for the fish that dare to hang above the abyss. It is definitely not the easiest of the three tactics. The number of fish out there are usually way less than between the grass or the edge of the drop off. The smaller fish like to hide in those places, as they will be easy prey for bigger fish out on the open water. The bigger fish, on the other hand, have no natural enemies so they can roam freely above the deeper water. This is where big swim baits like the 48cm pike really shine. Cannibalism is very common among big pike and 48cm might seem big but above these deep water spots you really want a big profile to seduce the monsters from the deep. Remember the short feeding windows we talked about earlier in this video. Big fish rather get one really good meal and rest the entire day than to chase 10 smaller snacks. That doesn't mean the fish will not grab smaller lures when the opportunity presents itself. They are still opportunistic. If an easy meal gets presented and it requires zero effort, why not? But getting him to spend several meters to attack a lure, generally big lures simply work better. For big pike, but also big zander, roaming the pelagic zone, simply put above deeper water, usually in the middle part, is super effective. They have great camouflage, a white belly to hide them from eyes below and a dark back to hide them from eyes from above. All they need to do is wait, look upwards and strike when a prey swims by. This is also why trolling above deep water during summer is so effective in catching big fish compared to other tactics. With trolling you can cover a lot of water, especially when you use paravans and have a broad selection of lures out. 
Also, trolling a 40cm trout is much easier than casting them. The fact that you can experiment on different depths with multiple rods out helps to crack the code much sooner. Go big or go home they say, and Savage Gear is the only brand that consistently provides big swim baits for big fish. The 30 and the 40cm trouts are legends, and the 32cm roach and the burbot are on a category of their own. We often get many questions on the desired speed for specific lures. Here's a quick overview of the minimum speed per lure and what I consider the optimum speed. Pause the video if you want to because it's a lot of information. With trolling, especially with paravans, I would suggest using heavy bait caster setups like the big bait specialist. This will make it easy for you to fight the fish but also retrieve the paravans easily. Even though it's more effective, it doesn't mean you need to troll to target these big fish. You can also target the deeper water while casting. Now there are several new sonar systems out on the market that can help you locate these pelagic pike, but we will cover that in another video. Even without these fancy systems, which definitely help to find and fish selectively, you can also try to find schools of brim and other bait fish on more traditional sonar systems. Side imaging systems, for example, are more common and work very well in locating these big schools. You will bump into a brim or two when you cast between those big schools, but eventually something bigger and with more teeth will rip the rod out of your hands. Casting the 25 centimeter roach works really well to target fish between two and five meters deep. If you go deeper, the 36 cm burbot or the 40 cm real eel work really well to target those fish that are closer to the bottom. With this specific tactic, you really need to keep an eye out on your sonar and sometimes you will be driving your boat more than you will be casting. But paying attention to these details will enable you to catch more fish. In the next episode of this four part series, we will go into detail on fishing during autumn, the time of year where anything can happen, as the feeding frenzy before winter kicks in. But before we go back to shorter days, darkness and cold, enjoy summer while it lasts guys. Before you know it, we'll be back in full protective winter gear, praying for temperatures above zero degrees. Don't forget to subscribe to the Savage Gear YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.